Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, today we will be discussing the popular peasant and tribal uprisings in modern India from 1857 to 1947. The first popular peasant uprising during this period was Indigo revolt. The first percent uprising during this period was Indigo Revolt. It took place in 1859 in Bengal. Digambar Vishwas and Vishnu Vishwas were the leaders of this peasant uprising. But the first uprising was in 59. The leaders of this peasant uprising were Digambar Vishwas and Vishnu Vishwas. What were the reasons behind the peasant uprising? in Bengal. One, the indigo planters were forced to cultivate indigo at a loss. The European planters with the support of English East India Company, indigo plantations had been set up in Bengal since 1770s. Since 1770s, indigo plantations had been set up in Bengal. In these indigo plantations, these peasants were forced to cultivate indigo at lows. They did not earn much profit from the cultivation of indigo. The second reason was that. They were not allowed to extensively cultivate food grains which were required for their subsistence. In these most fertile areas of the region, only indigo was allowed to cultivate. This was the reason behind the outbreak of indigo rights in Bengal. Since the peasants did not and any profit from the cultivation of indigo, nor did they allow cultivate food grains. It was because of these reasons they stopped the cultivation of indigo and resistance movement was started. Thus, the indigo revolt started and Hindu patriot. It was a newspaper in Bengal, another newspaper Bengali. These two newspapers made coverage of the peasant movement and showed how it ended in success. These two newspapers Hindu Patriot and Bengali made the coverage of the movement of the peasants and how it ended in success. One of the play 
penned by Deen Bandhu. Name of the play Neil Darpan. This play was composed based on this indigo revolt. This play highlighted the plights of the indigo persons, plights of the indigo persons are being elaboratedly dealt with this novel Dinabenthu. In 1860, an inquiry was ordered by the British government into the indigo revolt and after the indigo revolt, the plant is shifted indigo cultivation from Bengal to Bihar. Indigo cultivation was shifted from Bengal to Bihar. The second peasant uprising during the period under discussion was Mobella uprising. Period of this uprising was from 1850 to 1900. Mobella uprising occurred in Malabar, part of then Madras presidency, now it forms the part of Kerala. In Malabar, Muslims were the peasants, they were the cultivating class, they were no, locally known as Mopullas or Mapullas, they were no, locally known as Mopullas or Mapullas. Who were the landowners? The interesting fact that was that many of the landowners belonged to the, belonged to the upper caste Hindus. Nayers, Nambiyars, Nayers and Nambiyars, the upper caste Hindus who owned majority of the lands where these Muslim peasants popularly known as Mapilas engaged in cultivation. What were the reasons behind the uprising? As elsewhere, the high revenue demand, the high revenue demand of the Britishers was the reason behind the outbreak of the Mapilla uprisings. But the British gave it communal color. to the Mapilla uprising or Mobilla rebellion because Muslims were the peasants and the upper caste Hindus were the land owning community. So, the Britishers gave communal color to the uprising, it was considered as a Hindu Muslim rebellion by the British. In 1875, an anonymous petition mentioning the flights of the peasants was submitted to Madras government, but it did not end there. The Muslim peasants continued to loot the houses of the upper caste Hindus who owned the lands. In addition to that, they also defiled the Hindu temples and it went unabated till 1900. For the second rebellion was Mobilla uprising, it occurred in Malabar which formed then the Madras presidency the present day in present day Kerala. 
or Muslims were the cultivating class, the Oneids were the upper caste Hindus. As elsewhere, the reason behind the uprising was high revenue demand of the British government, which gave it a communal colour. An anonymous petition was submitted to the Madras government in 1875, but it did not produce any result. The Muslim persons continued to loot the houses of the Hindu land owning community and defiled the temples. The third percent movement was Papina movement. Papina movement. It also occurred in Bengal. Year 1873 to 1885. This was third percent uprising occurred in India and this broke out in Bengal. In Papnia, the peasants did not object the hikes of rent hikes or land revenue. The peasants were ready to pay the hiked amount of revenue. Then what was the reason behind the outbreak of the Papina uprising? The landlords who began to evade the occupancy rights received by the peasants. Even though the peasants were given occupancy rights, the Semindars or landlord, landlords tried to annihilate or to took away the occupancy rights given to the peasants. This was the reason behind the outbreak of Papina rebellion. The peasants were ready to pay hiked amount of tax. The problem was that the landlords or Semindars tried to annihilate the occupancy rights got by the peasant community. In 1873, an agrarian league was formed. But the pro Semintar newspaper, Amrita Basar Patrika, Amrita Basar Patrika which objected the creation of the agrarian league. The peasants made the declaration that they wanted to become the rights of Queen of England. Queen of England. They were ready to pay the hiked amount of tax, but these peasants expressed that they wanted to the rights of the Queen of England. Initially, the colonial administration sympathized with the Papna peasants, but once the Papna uprising became a popular form of agitation, it disturbed the Britishers and they began to suppress the movement. In this case also, the British is featured the Papina rebellion as a communal uprising. Since two thirds of the persons were Muslims, like in the case of the Mobile uprising, the British tried to characterize Papina uprising as a communal rebellion between the Hindus and Muslims. Two thirds of the peasants were Muslims. Two thirds of the peasants were Muslims. 
But the interesting fact is that the leaders of the rebellion were Hindus. Keshava Chandra Roy Keshava Chandra Roy and Shambhunath Pal they were the Hindus. Like the case of Malabar rebellion, the British has tried to characterize Papina uprising as a communal rebellion between Hindus and Muslims. Since two thirds of the peasants were Muslims, but the revolt was led by two Hindu leaders Keshava Chandra Roy and Shambhu Nath Pal. From the Papina uprising, the Semintas came in to know the fact that it was not possible to flee the peasants. They understood that it was not possible to evict the peasants from the occupancy rights. Now, the fourth peasant uprising was Deccan rights. Period. 1875. The right one is to settlement was introduced in Dakkan. Under the Raidwari system of settlement, who were the owners of the land? The peasants were the owners of the land under the Raidwari system of settlement and the peasants were required to directly pay land tax to the British administration. If the crop was not good, these peasants borrowed money from money lenders. The money lenders charged exorbitant interest rate from 25 to 50 percent interest rate was charged by the money lenders on these peasants. If the peasants did not repay his debt, his lands would be taken away by the money lender. During this time, the British government hiked the tax up to 50 percent tax. The land tax was fixed, land tax was raised to 50 percent by the Britishers. The situation was further aggravated by increasing population, increasing population. This resulted to the transfer of the ownership of lands to the money lenders. Money lenders took away the lands of the peasants. These were the reasons behind the outbreak of the Deccan riots in 1875. In Deccan, the moneylenders charged exorbitant interest rate on the loans taken by the peasants for the payment of land tax. The peasants were known as Quinbis and the village moneylender came into known as Wanis. And with the hiking of the land tax by the British government to 50 percent, the peasants did not have any option other than revolting against the British administration. The money lenders were not subjected to 
the executive and judicial authority of the village. Village could not control the money lenders. So, this was the reason behind the outbreak of the Deccan rights in 1875. Pune Sarvajanik Safa. Pune Sarvajanik Safa under the leadership of Justice Ranade. provided leadership to Deccan rights. It was also pictured as a class struggle by the Britishers. In 1879, Agricultural Relief Act was passed. Agricultural Relief Act was passed in 1879, which gave some relief to the peasants. The next person uprising was Koya Rebellion. Koya Rebellion was the next person uprising. It took place in 1879-80. In Godavari tract of Andhra Pradesh, Godavari tract of present Andhra Pradesh and the Malgangiri region of Malgangiri region of the present day Orissa. It is considered as a tribal uprising. Koya Rebellion, which broke out in 1879-80 in Godavari tract of present day Andhra Pradesh and the Malgangiri region of Orissa. It was a tribal uprising. What were the reasons behind the outbreak of Koya Rebellion? There were mainly two reasons. First was erosion of the customary rights. erosion of the customary rights enjoyed by the tribal peasant community over forests. The forests began to be controlled by the Britishers. Earlier these tribals entered into forest and collected forest produce like honey and bamboo. But now the, these tribals were not allowed it to enter into forest for the collection of honey or bamboo. The second reason was exploitation of money lenders. Exploitation of money lenders. As you know how the money lenders exploited the tribal community. They also charged exorbitant interest rate on the loans taken by this tribal peasant community. As you have been told earlier, Tomma Dora was the leader of Koya rebellion. He was declared as the King of Malgankiri. King of Malgankiri. They attacked a police station that is Motu police station. Motu police station. In retaliation, the police captured Tomma Dora and he was killed. Following which the movement collapsed. Another 
uprising it was a also a tribal uprising birsa munda revolt birsa munda revolt year 1874 1901 it occurred in chota nagpur area chota nagpur area of south bihar chota nagpur area of south bihar what were the reasons behind the outbreak of Birsa Munda revolt? As in the case of Koya rebellion, the Birsa Munda revolt also broken out due to the erosion of the customary rights enjoyed by these tribals on forest. The second reason was forced labor. These persons were forced to render work without any remuneration. That was colonial laws. It was exploitative in character. These were the these three were the reasons behind the outbreak of the Birsa Munda revolt in 1874. Erosion of the customary rights which had been enjoyed by the tribal community since long, forced labor, the tribals were forced to render job without any remuneration, colonial laws which were exploitative in character. These were the reasons behind the outbreak of the Birsa Munda revolt. Initially, this revolt got support from German missionaries. German missionaries initially supported Birsa Munda revolt, but later due to the dissatisfaction with the German missionaries the tribals cut ties with the German missionaries and turned their attention to Catholic mission. Catholic mission. From this, Birsa Munda revolt was not against the British administration, but this uprising was directed against the Christian missionaries German missionaries colonial administration colonial administration semin thoughts These were the forces against whom Birsa Munda revolt was organized. This was a rebellion not against the Samindars or Britishers. It was also against the Christian missionaries. In 1875, in 1895, Birsa Munda became the leader of this revolt. His initial popularity was based on his medicinal and healing powers. He provided the leadership to the Birsa Munda revolt from 1895, but the Britishers captured Birsa Munda and put it to death. Hence, Birsa Munda revolt was ruthlessly suppressed by the Britishers. Now, we will discuss the char common characteristics features
common characteristic features of the these peasant and tribal uprisings. The first common characteristic feature of this tribal and peasant uprising was that these uprisings were not organized only against the British administration, but also Indian elements were also included like uh, Semin Thoughts and Money Lenders. One of the common characteristic feature features of this tribal and present uprising was that these uprisings were not directed not only against the colonial administration in India, but also these uprisings were directed against Indian elements of Semintars and Moneylenders. Secondly, projection of communal movement by the British. As we have seen earlier, Papna movement, Mobilna uprising were characteristic as communal uprising, even though the reasons behind the uprisings were colonial laws and increased the revenue demands of the British administration. But the British is characterized these uprisings are communal. The, uh, uprisings were communal. Thirdly, the peasants and the tribals raised the banner of revolt only against the illegal measures. They were ready to accept legal measures they raised the banner of revolt only illegal measures like eviction of customary rights or annihilation of the occupancy rights got by the peasants. Once they declared that they were ready to pay the legal taxes and reduce, but they are opposition was against the illegal dues and illegal annihilation of the occupancy rights got by this peasant community. Fourthly, solidarity among the peasants. the Papna movement which soon spread to other parts of the country and it demonstrated the solidarity of the peasants belonging to different parts of the country. It narrowed the gap between the intelligentsia and the masses. Hindu Patriot and Bengali, these two newspapers covered the indigo movement. Din Bandhu, who composed the novel. Neil Darpan highlighting the flights of the indigo cultivators from which the gap between the masses and the Indian intelligentsia got narrowed. 
Now, we come into the major questions, which are likely to be asked from this topic. One, examine the causes, examine the causes of the rise of peasant and tribal uprisings. Examine the causes of the rise of peasant and tribal as uprisings. Second question, what were the common characteristic features of peasant and tribal uprisings. This is the second question you are expected to answer. Now, match the following. Digambar Vishwas. He was one of the leaders of this uprising. Koya Rebellion, who did provide leadership to Koya Rebellion. Mundar Volt, the last tribal uprising we studied. Who did provide leadership to Mundar Volt? Papina Revolt. Samunda. Now, we are going to analyze the peasant movements organized under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. The first, first peasant issue in which Mahatma Gandhi involved was Chambaran Sadhyagriha. Chambaran was a place in Tirhat division of North Bihar. It belonged to the part of the Tirhat division of North Bihar. The European plantains had set up indigo plantations since the beginning of the 19th century. The system of cultivation existed in Champaran came into known as Tingadiya system. Tingadiya system. It was a system of indirect cultivation. The peasants leased out land from European plantations by making annual advance payment from the plantations. These peasants leased out land by making annual advance payment. And an agreement was also entered into between the landowner and peasant. Under this agreement, 
the patient was bound to cultivate indigo patient was bound to cultivate indigo at 3 twentieth of the land he leased out from the land owner and in the remaining area he used it to the person used it to cultivate food grains this was the system of cultivation existed in Champaran what happened in 1916 because of the import of German synthetic synthetic indigo there were no buyers for the indigo produced at Champaran so the peasants decided not to cultivate indigo because there were no buyers for the purchase of indigo produced at Champaran. But under the agreement which had ended in between the peasant and land owner, the peasant was bound to cultivate at the 3 twentieth of the land. So, the land owners or the planters collected illegal dues collected illegal dues from the peasants for discharging from the obligation of cultivation of indigo at a loss this was the issue at champaran this issue came up for discussion at the lucknow session of indian national congress In 1916, this Champaran issue came up for discussion at Lucknow session of Indian National Congress held in 1916. But Mahatma Gandhi did not show any interest because he was not aware of the actual problems faced by the peasant community. But it was Raj Kumar Shukal. It was Raj Kumar Shugal who brought Mahatma Gandhi into Champaran issue. Now, Mahatma Gandhi decided to investigate the problems faced by peasants at Champaran. For this purpose, he reached at Bihar, but once he reached at Motihari, Motihari he was arrested by the district administration, but with the intervention of the provincial, provincial government, with the intervention of the provincial government, Mahatma Gandhi was released and he was allowed to go to Champaran and investigate the plights of the peasants. A Champaran Agrarian Committee was constituted with Mahatma Gandhi as one of members. A Chambaran Agrarian Committee was constituted with Mahatma Gandhi as is one of the members. This committee investigated the grievances of the peasants and it reached that 25 percent of the illegal dues collected by the land owners should be refunded. 25 percent of the illegal dues should be refunded to the peasants. Based on the recommendation of the Chambaran Agrarian Committee, Chambaran Agrarian Act was passed. Chambaran Agrarian 
Act was passed in 1917. There were many prominent leaders who supported Mahatma Gandhi in Champaran issue. Who were they? Rajendra Prasad, Gorak Prasad, and Kribalini. They were the leaders who extended help to Mahatma Gandhi in the Chambaran issue. Now, we are going to analyze the second issue in which Mahatma Gandhi involved. It was Kheda Sadhyagraka. Kheda was a fertile place in Gujarat. The main items of cultivation were food grains, tobacco and cotton. These were the major items cultivated in Kheda and these items were marketed in Ahmedabad. But in 1917, due to heavy rainfall, Kari crop damaged. In 1917, due to heavy rainfall, Kharif crop in Keda damaged. So, the peasants demanded remission of taxes, remission of taxes, but the district administration was not ready for the remission of taxes. There was a provision in the revenue court that if the production was less than 25 percent, if it was less than 25 percent, total remission of taxes should be given. Two barristers, B. J. Patel and G. K. Parekh. who enquired the extent of the damage found that the crop production was less than 25 percent of normal production. So, the peasants were to be given complete remission of taxes, but the district administration was not ready. The district administration was not ready to give remission of taxes. This was the issue. The district administration expressed that this agitation was not the spontaneous uprising of the peasants, but this movement was organized by Homebrew League and Gujarat Safa. This was the observation made by district administration. The district administration observed that the agitation was not the spontaneous uprising of the peasants, but it was organized by Homebrew Leaguers, outsiders, Homebrew Leaguers and Gujarat Safa. Mahatma Gandhi then was the president of the Gujarat Safa. But in practice, this peasant agitation was not organized by Homebrew Leaguers and the Gujarat Sabha. But Mohanlal Pandey, a village leader in Kheda who provided initial leadership 
to this agitation of the peasants in Kedha. Mohanlal Pandya, he was a village leader, village leader in Kedha. <coughs> he was provided the initial leadership to peasant agitation in Kedha. Gandhi was invited into this issue. Gandhi reached Kedha and started Satyagraha movement. Gandhi started Satyagraha movement on 22nd March 1918. He inaugurated the Satyagraha movement at Nadiyat. Mahatma Gandhi urged the peasants not to pay taxes. Like the case of Chambaran Satyagraha, there were prominent personalities who offered support to Mahatma Gandhi in Keda Satyagraha. They were Indulal Ejinik, Indulal Ejinik, Vallabhai Patel, and Anasuya Sarafai. Anasuya Sarafai. They offered support to Mahatma Gandhi in Keda Sadhyagraga. On 21 April 1918, 2337 persons. On 21st April 1918, 2337 percent took the pledge that they would not pay tax. Later, the government decided to collect tax only from those persons who were able to pay tax. The first two Satyagraha movements involved by Mahatma Gandhi were this Chambaran and Keda Satyagraha, these two present Satyagrahas ended in success. Now, moving to questions. What was Tingadiya system? Who did help Gandhi in Chambaran Sadhyagraha? Question number 3. Who did bring Gandhi? in the Chambaran issue. Question number 4. Name the barristers who inquired the grievances of Keda persons. Question number 5. Who was the president of Gujarat Safa? during Kheda issue. Question number 6. Who did provide initial leadership to 
head of patients. Question number 7. Who did support Gandhi in Kheda issue? These are the questions to which you are expected to answer. Thank you dear students for watching this lecture. Thank you.